Hello everybody, we want to give a warm welcome to all of our viewers and to those of you who um, came early and watched our initial um, live stream welcome, thank you. We want you to know that we appreciate you. Um, normally we would have you all together with us in the form of a dinner. Um, we would really like to have everybody together to showcase what we have, um, but as we know due to the current circumstances, um, we have to do it through um, a live stream but regardless we're happy to have you here with us um, we're excited to let you know the new things that we have in the works um, I'm your host uh, Morgan and this is Dakota and we're gonna start off by um, letting you guys know a little bit about ourselves because we know that you probably haven't met um, Dakota or myself so uh, Dakota you want to take it away sure <clears throat> uh, so my name is Dakota uh, I work the clerk uh, position at the storage desk and also uh, took the role as winter manager for the warming center program um, I found this program actually as a client I was backpacking and filming a, a little documentary about what it's like to be homeless while um, living the experience myself and I walked into Santa Cruz and met the program director who we have behind the camera there Brent Adams and he said do you need somewhere to store that and I said yes I do about the 90 pound pack that I've been carrying for four months and tied to my waistband and um, so so that became uh, a position that I eventually uh, worked my way into first by volunteering and then eventually Brent offered me some work with the program uh, and Morgan how did you find the program yeah, so um, when I initially started working with the Warming Center um, about seven months ago now, um, it was in October, um, I honestly didn't know what I was getting myself into. Um, I transferred here in September to um, UCSC. Um, I'm studying sociology and legal studies, and um, the internship for the Warming Center was sent out in a mass email, so um, I thought I've always been interested in human rights. Um, I want to um, just help people in general. So I thought, okay, I'll apply for it. Um, I didn't know what I was doing, um, but I thought, let's go for it. Um, and in the time since I've been here, I have um, worked the winter shelter. I have um, consistently done laundry and showers and also worked a couple of storage shifts. Um, and honestly, this experience has completely changed the way that I think of homelessness um, as an issue and homelessness at, as a state of being. Um, and like we'll talk about l a little bit later in the video, um, uh, both Dakota and myself have really, really gained a lot from working with uh, the Warming Center and Footbridge Services Center. And we're excited to share it with you. And also, um, we want to give a um, warm welcome and thank you um, to our board member, Nancy Crusoe. We wouldn't be able to do it without her. Um, and Wireless, thank you for providing the music. You're great. We appreciate you. Um, we wouldn't be able to do this without you. And of course, behind the camera, um, we would not be able to do it with our director, Brent Adams. Um, we greatly appreciate you. Um, I know a lot of people do. So, thank you. Um, yeah, so let's get into the nitty gritty. Let's um, really let you know what we're here for. Um, Dakota, do you want to talk a little bit about what the Warming Center is and what it does? Sure. Yeah, so a lot of uh, uh, a lot of you know us through the Warming Center program. 
um, the Warming Center program is a pop-up warming uh, shelter that we do overnight during the winter months in Santa Cruz. And um, I'm going to stop real quick and read the mission statement uh, that will shed some light on how Footbridge Services came to be. So the mission statement in the Warming Center is to reduce the experience of hypotherma hypothermia and the occurrence of death within the population of those who sleep outside in Santa Cruz and to identify basic needs of homelessness and to build and operate programs to meet those needs. Um, identifying the basic needs of homelessness is something that, that was born out of the warming center, uh, seeing people bring in a lot of things that they needed stored, uh, things of that nature, um, asking them about where they generally sleep, uh, how they clean their clothes, etc., is what Footbridge Services Center is built off of the answers to those questions. Um, so now we are celebrating the grand opening of the Footbridge Services Center, which offers some of those um, solutions to the needs that we saw running the Warming Center program. And uh, yeah, we have a video rolling that we'd like to show you now. Yeah, let's do it. So hi everybody, we're here outside of Footbridge Services Center. Behind us over here is the Footbridge. It provides a lot of foot and bicycle traffic to our local homeless community. There's kind of a nexus of services around here, the Coral Street Complex, some food programs this way. Here the Footbridge comes across the levee, allowing people access across the river. A lot of people walking through here, so it's really a great location for the program. This is our hand sanitization area. The clerk sits here, makes sure that everyone's wearing a mask and sanitizing their hands. And the client lets us know the nature of their visit, whether they're here to get donation items or access their storage bins. We take their name down and get their storage for them. Be sure that they're seated and getting everything they need. This is where we store clients' bins. So we have nearly 300 clients on the shelves. Each client gets one to three bins, depending on their need. Uh, and we're sure to never turn anyone away from the program, always keeping bins open for people who are sleeping outside. And this is our donation room. Uh, here we take in from several different donation sites in town and distribute out clothing and blankets, as many as 3,000 blankets, several thousand pairs of socks. We have underwear, pants, jackets, ways for people to stay warm and stay clothed, both men and female clothing all around me. Okay, so here we have our oral care bin. That's uh, mouthwash, toothbrush, toothpaste, things like that. Floss, pads, and tampons. Soaps, shampoos, shaving cream, razors, uh, deodorants, medical kind of comfort stuff. That would be your sunscreen, aspirin, Tums. First aid bin, that's uh, band-aids, ointments, gauze, rubbing alcohol, things like that. Our bag of dog food. The program offers a laundry service, a storage service, and a shower service. These are all extremely helpful when you're living outside. Laundry, being able to now clean your own clothes, storage so you have somewhere to keep them, and a shower program so you can clean yourself and get into your clean clothes. Things that are taken for granted when you live in a house are now uh, available. Here at Footbridge Services Center, we have Shower Sunday every week from 11 to 3. And this is where we really try to create a space um, where people can not only get access to 20 minute hot showers, but also their storage bins, their clean laundry, any other donations that we're able to offer them, and hygiene supplies, as well as um, charging for their devices. So here at Vutbridge Services Center, we're really just trying to create an all-inclusive, holistic space where people can have all of their needs met so that they're not having to go to all of these different places just to get basic things like a short shower, clothing, hygienic products. Uh, we try to offer all of that here in one space. This is our charging area, and here we take in our client's devices, plug them in, and give them a charge. This is something that's incredibly difficult to obtain when you're out on the street, especially now with all the coffee shops and whatnot being closed. Uh, people are really unable to charge their devices, and phones and backup batteries, things of that nature, are extremely important to people that are living out on the streets. It's their lifeline to family, their ability to check the weather, be on the internet, and stay in contact. Here we have our different areas where we can plug in devices 
uh, they're numbered and color coded. And then over here, we write down the person's name. We also label each device that we're charging. So how our program works is any time of the week except for Tuesday evening, clients can drop off one 13 gallon bag of laundry to the, the center. Um, and as we receive them, we record the name. Um, so we have a list going of all the loads throughout the week. And then we get here and we do an assembly line process of loading, labeling, soap, money um, that we really have down to a science. Um, and as we're doing that process, we um, track where everybody's loads are um, based on the numbered machines because we really focus on not only not turning anybody away but having the capacity to do everybody's laundry without losing it. Um, so we we recognize that it's a big responsibility um, having people's belongings like that so we really make an effort. I'm just going through the recording process. We got washer, dryer, and done. And it's looking like we have 46 loads of laundry today. So that's Footbridge Services Center. Uh, that's laundry, storage, showers, donation materials, and charging all under one roof. Uh, these are transformative services, a lot of which did not exist prior to this program. We receive no sustaining funding from governments or any other source currently. That's why we'd like to encourage you to become a supportive partner of Footbridge Services Center. All right, so another thing that we're here to talk about is what makes Footbridge Services Center so different from other ser homeless services, nonprofits? Why do we need your support? Why are we important? Um, and we all have definitely have something to say about that. Um, so I wanna start off by saying that I myself, and I think a lot of other people will agree with me that there is a structural issue contributing to homelessness. Um, I don't think it's enough to, um, I don't think that small acts of kindness and charity are enough to really fix the larger national crisis that we have with the homeless. Um, we know that housing units are simply not available. Um, there becomes a certain point where people are too poor to be able to pull themselves out of the situation they're in. That's a large structural issue. I've struggled with that myself. I think there needs to be a large systemic change. But what we're doing here is sort of not accepting forever that this is going to be, be the way that things are, but we believe that it's more realistic to make the experience of homelessness more human because in the society that we live in, Unfortunately, we have people experiencing homelessness. We have people going through that. So what Fo Footbridge Services Center is doing is implementing these procedures to make people's experiences less horrible um, and just more human. You know, um, we accept that we don't want to have people on the streets, but if they are, then we're going to do the best that we can to make sure that they're clean, um, that they have access to, you know, hygienic resources, um, to food, to shelter, to all of the basic things that we as humans really take for granted. Um, so yeah, Dakota, what else, what else do you have to say? Uh, I think that's, yeah, it, it critically important. Um, having, having, uh, experience the program first as a as a client uh, I'll give you a little backstory on my involvement in homelessness which was thinking I'm gonna walk out onto the street with a video camera and a laptop and a sleeping roll and a backpack and I will um, still be a viable member of society just who's decided to make a documentary immersive be it about homelessness but I'll still 
you know, be able to chop it up with the locals and and be taken as a as a regular face value member of society. And uh, within five hours, I was shocked <laughs> and, yeah. and um, realized that would certainly not be the case. Uh, and I was not looked at the same. I, I didn't feel comfortable at all going into coffee shops or grocery stores or anything that I used to take for granted. Um, that evolved into actually going to homeless services centers uh, or just various homeless services would be a better way to say that. There wasn't a whole lot of centers that I encountered between San Mateo, Half, May, Half Moon Bay, and then here in Santa Cruz. Um, when I did come to this program as a client, the feeling was incredibly different from that that I had experienced at different services. Uh, I felt like a person. I felt like it was okay that I was coming in to receive a service, which a lot of times I didn't experience at other... And there were other programs that are doing great things, but and and good employees at those programs, but in general, I felt like I was a burden coming to get something, just like a little bit of food or some clothing, um, and that was, that was pretty hurtful. So to imagine... It, it was a full-time job to be homeless, and then... To imagine trying to get out of that situation, living the full-time job of being homeless, finding out where you're going to sleep, what you're going to eat, and then to go in and try and get something that's going to help your situation and feel like a burden because of that, um, it 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 hurts. And I chose to go into this situation. A lot of people didn't. So um, this program, one of the things that touches me most about it and why I think it needs to continue is that we treat people like humans when they come in and... Uh, because they are humans and I don't think that's a philosophy I think it's just a belief of the people who work in this program and um, so yeah I think that's immensely important yes homelessness exists and if we act like it's a burden uh, we're not going to help the people who are experiencing it yeah exactly I totally agree and um, to uh, for you guys to learn a little bit Nancy do you have anything to say no, I, I I just really like what you said about yeah. Not um, this morning, coming to work at nine o'clock, I saw a lot of people waking up on the street and looking really tired and ragged. And I was thinking of you working here, and that would be a day that was the daily encounter. And it is so it changes the day for you, doesn't it? Because you're just side by side. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it seems like the question of should we treat homeless people like humans, it seems like there would be an obvious answer for that, um, but unfortunately it has many people and organizations have proven that that might not be as easy as they think it is. Um, so bottom line, we treat people like humans with basic needs that need to be fulfilled and that about sums it up um, and to show you guys uh, we have another little video segment with the testimonials of many of our clients whom have given us permission just a little disclaimer um, they've given us permission to be shown in this video and to have their testimony shared um, but yeah let's go ahead and show it Uh, the services I use here are the storage. Storing things. I use the um, the the storage service that they um, provide or offer. I use the showering. Mostly all of them. <laughs> I use the storage. And I'm glad that they have this. I'm getting the benefits from the home and storage program, which helps me a lot. For me to have a place to keep some of my belongings, some of my personal things that mean something to me that have value, this is awesome. You know what I mean? And that's I mean that's one thing that's great. The, the, the fact that I can get my clothes washed once a week, that's a huge thing. That's first of all, it makes me feel better just have, having clean clothes. Secondly, I don't look like trash on the streets. I can get a job. I can do what I need to do to uh, be a productive member in society. I do uh, uh, phone charging. I'll do I do uh, storage, and then I'll I'll come in on occasional Sunday. I'll get in for a shower. I need I need to get some pants and um. Uh, I'm just gonna change my clothes and maybe grab a toothbrush for the night and um, yeah, I'm not really for sure, but this is a place where I could go you know, leave some things or take some things and have have prepare myself for the evening. You know what I mean? So I'm getting warm is what I'm doing. 
definitely getting some warmer clothes. I wouldn't be able to go get food every day because I'd be carrying around a lot more weight. All my stuff would be getting stolen. Uh, yeah, it'd just be terrible. It would be a nightmare because uh, you just don't want to carry all your stuff day and night. And so without this place, you know, it would be, uh, yeah, it would be a nightmare. Never had anywhere to store anything. And always had to carry stuff. I usually do anyway now, but carry a lot of stuff. But when there was nowhere to store anything before, that really sucked. And so this is just what this you know community really, really needed, something like this for a long time. I use the laundry on Wednesdays, and I take the showers on Sundays. And they let me store up to two bins. And uh, that's very convenient. <laughs> and it helps me a lot. Checking in and just getting my couple things charged and relaxing for a minute out of the heat and uh, also got a donation and uh, it helps a lot. It, it's, a, it's a big help and uh, I appreciate every bit of it. It, it makes it makes it, it makes it uh, a lot easier for me to, because otherwise I wouldn't be able to do, I don't know where to go charge. There's nowhere that everyone locks their charger, their plugs up and it's, it makes it difficult, especially for uh, people to get the free phones and then they have nowhere to charge. I use everything, I use the laundry, I use the showers, I use getting free clothing. Um, anything I need, they, these people provide for us and I'm great, we're grateful for, to have this program. With the lockdown, there's no access anywhere, uh, practically in the county, where uh, someone who is uh, houseless can charge their cell phone or a battery backup or, uh, or even uh, sit down and use a laptop. Um, mostly it's just getting a charge. I can find wireless at like the library and I usually would charge at the library but they're shut down now and so it's a vital uh, service that, that is provided here. Well I, my storage to keep my, my clothes and my stuff safe, um, the, the, the outlets, the, um, the showers, the, um, the, the list goes on I can't you know if I need a blanket there's a blanket, a tent I've been provided I've been um, every little need I, that I've had has been taken care of as far as like hygiene um, uh, batteries, if I need like a bike lock or something, it's just been provided and I'm very thankful and without that stuff, um, I would have lost all my stuff, probably wouldn't have had a bike anymore. Taking a shower. Mm -hmm. Shower, because um, they're clean. <laughs> they're clean and there's more time on me. At the mm -hmm. shelter, they don't get that much time. Mm. Here. The showers. Is that what you're doing today? Mm-hmm. Um, been doing it for close to what, three months now? How do, you, how do you feel about it? feel great. Every single time I get out of that thing, feel like a million bucks. If I get a shower once a week, stoked. Yeah. I'm not a dirty person. I keep myself clean, but once a week, man, I get in the shower, sometimes shave. I don't really care about that too much. What are you but, doing here today? Uh, picking up my laundry today, man. I got clean clothes. These, I've been wearing these pants for over a week, man. I don't change my pants. I got a new shirt my friend gave me yesterday. I go, I'm not wearing the white one until I get some clean pants. So I put it on and I came down here, put some new clean pants on and I'm gonna keep moving along, man. But the shower, there's no place to find a shower in the city of Santa Cruz because before I could go to the gym, I belong to the gym, and sometimes I would shower at St. Francis. But all these places are closed now. They clean it after every person takes a shower. Actually, I hate to say this, but this shower is cleaner than the one at the gym. I am came to take a shower because they have the cleanest showers. <laughs> They're very, very, very clean here. I do, I've done the laundry several times and I think the laundry is an excellent service. I definitely shower when I can get here every Sunday and uh, the laundry facility is even uh, better. That's like my favorite thing, I believe is the shower. I mean, the, well, the shower and the laundry. And um, you know, when I can get around, I'm really bad at keeping times and schedules, but but it's really it's really a good, uh, handy service for uh, me and my friends. That's why I'm like, oh, the laundry too. Thank you for that, because um, it's hard to get money right here, being homeless, um, to do laundry. It's great that you guys have laundry. Mostly, all the time, we always have to put dirty clothes on. The laundry, the, the storage, it's been helping me a lot, dude. Like, now I'll be able to like, have clean clothes whenever I need to make an appointment or something. That's very important. Instead of going to showing up to an appointment all smelly and dirty, like, I can show up, you know, 
know, I can shave, do a Sunday, Sunday day uh, showers. You know, this thing really helps me. Not only me, but it helps a lot of people. Uh, what do you store generally, clothes or? Clothing, uh, tools, expensive stuff that I usually have just to keep them safe. Yeah. Because being out here is rough. <laughs> so if you didn't have any of this? Well, I would be hurting. I'd probably be, uh, I don't know. Couldn't tell you, probably be dirty as hell. Would it change your life a little bit? It would change my life a lot because, I mean, the laundry is a blessing. The, the help they give us is, is great, and we're blessed to have them. Monetary flow has been very uh, uh, uneven, so it's very difficult for me to get my laundry done um, and try to try to maintain a presentable uh, look while I'm out in public. And since I am homeless, I am constantly in public, and I don't want to be an eyesore. So, um, that's another critical thing, is being able to get clean clothes or get my clothes clean. Uh, especially if, as I'm looking for work, I also have to be presentable for an interview. So I want to give my thanks from the bottom of my heart. I've been coming here for a while now, and I'm, I'm even my mom's even been involved in picking up my property when uh, there was a time where I wasn't around to do it, and that's, uh, I mean. Fruit are like a huge thing. If I didn't have none of this stuff, I'd, be, I'd basically be, you know, 20 steps behind. Uh, what I, where I'm already at, like behind a little bit, you know, it's it's frustrating, and and, it, uh, and it's definitely uh, refreshing to have people help and people there for uh, the support and everything else, and someone to talk to or whatever, you know. When you're having a, uh, it's not you know when you're having a rough day or anything, it'd be the smallest thing to uh, pick you back up. It really does help. It makes a big difference in people's attitudes and their and their well-being and just being healthy and everything. It's just the right amount of service for most people, in my opinion. You definitely need this service, so I hope that it sticks around because you guys help me a lot. Yes. The people here are so humble and so nice and giving. I mean, it's incredible. That's all I got to say, and I'm not trying to flower this deal up. It's a blessing. Overall, it's just it's a godsend that I've never uh, I've never seen anything quite so giving without uh, anything asking anything back. So you guys are obviously I, I would say uh, privy to the the universal benefits of doing the right thing like that. You know, because I think that's what you're doing. Really, you're not asking any money, and you're just doing it uh, for the sake of universal need, and uh, and that's exactly what's working. It really is. Uh, at least this, this place is a place to go to like even have a little 15 minutes to sit down and be like um, social with people and um, have a a base on community, you know, I'm, I'm sure we're all pushing for the right direction. I've seen people have some pretty neat goals out of this place. I find the staff here to be uh, just exceptionally helpful and caring about people's needs and, and wants. And uh, with, a, with a level of compassion that I haven't seen in, uh, in other programs. To see what other solutions work and don't work. And he's done the homework. And he, he's, he's seen things that work. And so his programs all Four of them are working. You get the experience and the knowledge and, and tips from other programs and that have refined their, their uh, services and uh, um, and use those to, to put together four programs that are all useful. In my opinion, they're probably the four most needed ones. I think legal help would be a good one, but that's another. But I would say this is more the, on the top of the list of something that you would donate to for if you care about people that you know, didn't really have anything. And but I, yeah, I would recommend them donating and, and keeping this open because so many people not only depend on it, but need it. To keep it open, open, just keep it open. And more, have it more, since it's getting full, I guess, or bigger, bigger place, bigger spot. For everything that they do for you, charging, uh, allowing you to shower, uh, bring your dirty laundry. Um, I mean, this service is so worth it. Uh, it, we, it would be a shame for it not to um, stay open. It's, if you have the extra money, then um, you're putting it in a perfect place. That's how I see it. I think you're doing something that you're very fatherly about it too, in, in the sense that when uh, people are, are, are going about their dailies and, and you're, you check in with them and see where they're at, like, is this helping you? You want to know, is this helping you? Because you don't want it to be something that's actually just detrimental and not really giving as much as it could. And uh, and I think it's always positive. And for the people that are just taking advantage, I just think it still helps. I think it still gives them more than it takes away. So I think it's positive right down the line. And so if there's anybody out there that has some extra funding, this is the perfect place to put it.
All right, welcome back everybody. Uh, that was some testimonials from our clients and um, it's something I'd like to talk about. My experience uh, working with our clients here has been uh, just amazing. I, I started working in the summer um, and was really coming from, I was living uh, literally under a bridge at this point and uh, out interacting with people and then coming here um, to help people get things that they might need. So I had both just a social existence outside in the community and then um, a, a role as a desk clerk here where I was um, in charge of managing the room, managing the people who I uh, am peers with and um, making sure they were getting what they needed. And it was really cool for me to see the amount of respect that the people um, whom I knew from the street had for the program, the amount of respect I got just for working here. Uh, it wasn't like, um, there's there's kind of different, a lot of people who are on the streets, I guess the way to say this is, are a little disillusioned with society sometimes because they're not having the greatest experience of society at this point. And sometimes working a job can fall into that uh, it can even be like looked down upon because these people don't have jobs and they're upset about how they're not able to get them. But that I had this job was really uh, I was I, I was respected, which was really neat. Um, and then just coming in here and doing that through the summer, learning how to help people, um, learning how to care for people and get them what they need, and also you know, manage the very, there's a lot of different types of people on the street. It's probably the most akin to being a bartender would, would be working the, the storage <laughs> job desk. Um, you deal with a lot of different people, trying to get them what they need, and um, and then also make sure that everyone's getting out and uh, home safe, wherever home may be. So, um, anyways, I'm rambling there. I, I took a couple months <laughs> off. Uh, and came back to be the winter manager at the at the warming center and also work storage desk. Um, and there I got to really experience the survival side of taking care of people, um, how important a blanket and a beanie and a coat really is. Things that we might buy at thrift stores or even at, at uh, br buy brand new and have sitting in our closet. Um, the good people of the community donate to this program and then I was the one who was physically grabbing them from our donation racks and handing them out to people who, if they didn't have that blanket, would either shiver through the night um, or possibly even die. And so that really impressed upon me. And uh, I'm really grateful to be able to have worked here, done that, done it in a human way. And, um, and yeah, and just see the, the look on people's faces uh, whether it's something as simple as just a, a hello and how are you or a blanket that might save their, their life. Um, yeah. Yeah. And all of this isn't us being here to tell you how hard this experience is, how hard our jobs are, you know, how important everything that we're doing is. We're here to tell you that every little thing that you do for a person, homeless or not, has a big impact. I think that one of the most important things that we can do for the homeless population is, like Dakota was saying, just treat them like people. You know, you don't know how important a single beanie or a single blanket or a single jacket will be for that person. Um, so I think Dakota's and um, others' experiences can really just teach us that to just talk to people, just have a conversation with someone who's homeless um, rather than, you know, putting your head down and avoiding contact and walking right past them. You know, um, we just need to realize that people experiencing unfortunate situations are still people. And um, we're here to remind everybody of that and to do our best to treat them as such. What else? The next thing on the list. And... Here comes Brent to talk about funding. All right, well, you're going to cut all this out right here. But no, I'm going to keep it rolling. Oh, you're going to keep it rolling. Um, so, so we're going to rotate over and introduce Brent Adams. Okay, yeah. So 
the question is, why are we doing all of this? Um, we're here to really um, start to talk about why fundraising is important and why we as a program need your support. Um, so here is our lovely director, Brent Adams, to um, tell us a little bit more about how you can help. Am I lovely? Thank you. Uh, let us know in the comments below if you think I'm lovely. All right? Uh, well, let's just... <laughs> 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 More to the point, the <laughs> comments below, uh, so you you watched our, uh, our live stream. By the way, I'm Brent Adams, director uh, and administrator of the program. I want to honor uh, the crew here. It's been such a good video so far. Uh, we had a, in, in, in a dinner celebration. What we're really doing with you is, as they said at the beginning, we normally get together. Uh, we love our community of support and volunteers so much, people who donate blankets, socks, um, as you saw in the video, this year alone we gave more than 2,000 blankets away. And it doesn't seem like that, but we're giving as many as five blankets a shift sometimes, sometimes 10 a day uh, over, the, over the course of the year, thousands of socks. Uh, and these are all uh, thanks to you. Uh, uh, I don't want to lose track. Um, and maybe you notice we're drinking a little bit of wine, we're celebrating uh, with you, uh, celebrating the grand opening of the Footbridge Services Center. We would have a huge party with a band and a, and a huge hoopla here on the, 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 the facility because we have this huge facility that we use. You saw in the video that we roll in a trailer for showers. Um, we're using the place for storage and laundry. I mean, you know, people coming onto the property. So it's a, it's a really a godsend, surprising in the last two years what we've been able to manifest and all uh, because, uh, because of you. If you'd like to interact with us, we'll be watching this video uh, along with you. Uh, so if you want to say hello or say anything to us in the comments below, feel free. We'll be answering as a Warming Center's Footbridge Services Center. I'm jumping into the frame here to really talk about funding, though. Uh, you bought a ticket, and I thank you. Um, and you've been supporting us all along, showing up. We had a very mild winter. It, for a lot of people outside, they didn't agree it was cold. But for our temperature uh, thresholds, 39 degrees. We opened at 39 uh, uh, in the downtown core. Uh, there's a lot of microclimates, and we really watched that doggedly all year long. Uh, and it was hovering at 41, 42 degrees as a forecast uh, two days out. So what we did is we doubled down and make sure that every single person who wanted it had the access had access to access to a blanket. We I don't think we said no to anyone who asked for a blanket. Um, we had blankets all winter thanks to you. Hand warmers, rain ponchos, finally tarps, jackets, clothing, hoodies. Um, and a lot of that stuff is comes comes out of a, a budget. The San Jose City of Santa Santa voice oh, at San Jose. It's so weird that I have that in my head. Uh, City of Santa Cruz still has yet to uh, meet our uh, uh, agreement. Uh, I have to actually get an invoice to them. Fifteen thousand dollars to affirm that nobody would get hypothermia this winter. That we would be able to shelter. We'd be open. At two locations instead of one. We have enough materials uh, and we're ready for a cold snap of 10 days at freezing if we need to, to, to shelter several hundred people. So that's what we're about. This program here, though, uh, doesn't really get sustaining funding, nor does the warming center. So let's go back to what I just jumped in the frame here. Um, uh, Sustaining funding doesn't exist. Uh, we don't get normal government funding from the none of that heap millions, none of the COVID money. Um, we don't get any uh, uh, from core investments from the city or the county on a yearly basis, like so many other similar nonprofits do. And it's primarily because we're focusing in on basic homeless needs. The paradigm is mainly focused on, it's a federal par paradigm uh, set out by the federal government uh, that meets the demand for housing first, putting people on the pathway to housing. Whether that housing exists or not, as long as your program is focused on that, you get the funding. Um, but there's, not, there's no box you can check for programs that are meeting basic needs. So what we did was instead of focusing on, I, I, am, I get, realize I'm ranting, I'll pull it in for a landing here soon. No. We're not focused on funding sources, we're focus on, focusing on the basic unmet needs of homelessness. Homelessness, it's, as it turns out, is not a, just a lack of housing. Uh, if we're not going to house anybody, then we should be focusing on all the basic needs. When you see a person who s sleeps outside, you're normally seeing them walking around with a lot of belongings. You're seeing them in a disheveled, uh, unkept manner. Well, those are the things that they, we've been calling those unmet needs all along. 
those are highly meetable and we as an organization as a team here have just decided to one after the other meet those needs laundry as we listed laundry storage showers donation materials place to plug things in we've solved that for homelessness for Santa Cruz with your help and and so what I'm doing now is a kind of a deep dive it's five hundred dollars a week to do laundry for 60 people part of that is our uh, 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 staff salary but mainly it's we're feeding it costs five hundred dollars to feed the machines to do 60 loads of laundry um, right now I'm looking straight into the camera and I'm appealing to you if you're able to write a check or go to our warming center program .com and click the donation button and donate five hundred dollars so you can own a week of laundry or more or uh, if you go to the website you can click the donation button and give us five dollars a month have a monthly uh, donation or anything you can uh, muster because in this COVID-19 time the population is growing ever desperate as you noticed in the video you people aren't getting their clothing from any other sources um, a lot of the programs are, have closed down minimized we double down uh, we're not wearing masks right now we work together a lot in close uh, circumstances really we're not wearing masks we're kind of mimicking the home uh, dinner uh, situation but we really take an incredible and Dakota will agree an incredible stand on uh, keeping ourselves and our clients safe uh, constantly demanding that they're wearing masks even upon coming onto the property uh, and really encouraging them to the, live their lives so they can instruct the people around them I think I got the, uh, did did what I wanted to do here didn't I that yeah. feel good so yeah, yeah. Yeah, and if you want to learn more about our um, hygienic uh, practices, follow our Instagram. Um, we're, we've been posting on there more often. It's just Warming Center Program on Instagram. So if you can't donate, that's another way that you can um, support us is just by following us on social media, boosting our posts, um, letting other people know what we're about. Um, yeah, I just want to plug that real quick. Yeah, yeah. so we are a community. Uh, we are community supported. As you know, we started with the Warming Center Program. A lot of you have worked overnight with us. Uh, then we started the storage program and we realized we're doing pretty good. We got this facility, laundry, storage, all the things we do now. Um, but it's community involvement. We only exist because of you. We And what I really wanted to say here is we don't know where our sustaining funding is coming from. We were, we were getting a yearly grant from Kaiser that was sustaining. That's been suspended now. Um, and we don't know if the community at large is going to have the money to do to donate you all and others like we have been because a lot of people are going to be financially strapped so that so that you are who are doing well we, we ask that you double down on this program in particular there are lots of great work doing that's happening in Santa Cruz but this program in particular goes straight to the heart of what's happening on the street in Santa Cruz we're not telling stories about the larger paradigm or s ending homelessness uh, but we're going we're meeting people's needs where they are and I think the testimonials really uh, 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 demonstrated that so we've really done our best to cover everything that we're about um, in this session but we recognize that um, this problem is the problem of homelessness um, and its solutions um, are very comple complex and fluid um, along with everything that's going on with COVID. So we recognize that you might have questions. So if you want to leave your questions in the comments below, we will do our best to um, answer them. Uh, but we hope that um, we have given you some more information through this video and a little bit um, of faith in what we do. Um, yeah, because honestly, because we're a community funded organization, we would not be here without your support. So a genuine thanks to you and thank you for watching. Um, and yeah, that's all we have for you today. Will you play us out wireless? Yeah. Do us the razor out. glasses to the folks at home. Oh mm. yeah. Mine's and empty. Yeah, mine too. Oh, well, I uh, we can't pull a little bit. Thanks. That's good, that's okay. good. That's good. Wireless. Thank you.